your watching gears. You know, one of the main reasons that people spend a lot of time and money building and restoring custom vehicles is that they dream of one day having something like this, something slick and cool that hopefully is worth some money. But if you want to build and drive a custom vehicle, well, you got to start somewhere. And if it's a classic truck that you want, finding the perfect starting vehicle is not that hard or expensive. Of course, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look more like this. With a lot of wear and tear, old faded paint, worn out engine and interior, but a fairly solid body and frame. The biggest problem that you usually run into though when you're dealing with a cheap project truck is the fact that it's probably a long bed. Now, I know there's some of you out there that prefer a long bed on your daily work truck, and that's fine. But on a classic hot rod truck, the shorter the bed, the better it looks, and the more it's worth. The problem is, a factory short bed 67 through 72 Chevy truck is expensive. So, you got a long bed, but you'd really rather have a short bed. So, what do you do? Simple chop that sucker down. <laughs> now, I know that some of you guys are probably thinking that chopping down a long bed is a recipe for disaster. And it can be if you do it wrong. But if you do it right, you're going to have a vehicle that's every bit as strong and reliable as a factory short bed. But the best part is, you could take a long bed, chop it down, put on a brand new short bed, and come out way cheaper than if you hunted down a factory short bed. That's what we're going to show you how to do. Okay, our victim here is a 67 long bed, and the first question is where do you cut and how much? Now, logic would tell you that you just whack out a chunk here and weld it all back together, and that would be wrong. The best place to cut the frame is underneath the cab, and we'll explain why here in a little bit. So, first thing you need to do is disassemble the truck. You'll be surprised how quick and easy these things come apart on TV. <laughs> The first thing to go is the front sheet metal, like the hood, the fenders, and the inner fenders. Make sure that you bag and label all the hardware so it doesn't get all mixed up, because you're going to have a lot of it. Next, disconnect all the wiring, the brake and fuel lines, any shifter or pedal linkage, and of course the steering shaft. All right, with the front end disassembled and everything disconnected, it's time to get this long bed off of here. Now these are only held on with a few bolts, so once you get those undone, you can lift this whole thing off in one piece.
Now there's several different ways to lift a bed off of a truck by using jacks and lifts or three or four of your friends. But one of the easiest is to use one of these slick bed lifting tools designed to make it a one-man operation. All right, now you can start to really see the difference between the long bed and the short bed of these old Chevys. Not only longer up here, they're also longer back here. Now I know some of you guys will look at this going, oh man, that means you gotta cut out a chunk here and a chunk there and weld it together and shorten the bed down and oh man, you're talking about a lot of work here. And you would be if that's how you had to do it. But you don't have to do it that way anymore because LMC Truck has got a complete short bed kit for the 67 through 72 Chevy pickups. Includes the bedsides, the floor, the hardware, the tailgate, everything. So all you literally have to do is bolt it together. So you do not have to cut the long bed down, but the frame, oh, you still gotta cut that. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are in the process of showing you how to take a 67 through 72 Chevy long bed truck and chop it down into a short bed using a bunch of new parts from LMC Truck. Now, obviously, to do a project like this, you gotta cut the truck in half, which means first, you gotta disassemble it. So, we've got the bed off, we've got the whole front end disassembled, now it's time to get the cab off the frame. Once everything like the steering and the wiring and the pedals and the cables are disconnected, the best way to lift a cab off is to use a floor lift so you can get it high enough to roll the frame out of the way. And there it is, a nice frame ready to be cut. The question is, where? Remember, a long bed frame is 20 inches longer than a short bed, but not all in the same spot. So you gotta take 12 inches out of the middle and eight inches off the back. And if you do this, you will basically have a short bed frame. All the mounting points for the bed are all gonna line right up perfect. So the middle cut, obviously, is the most important. Now, on a long bed, this is your front bed mount. On a short bed, this is your front bed mount, and they are 12 inches apart. Basically, what we need to do is move this mount to this location. Now, I know some of you guys are looking at this going, <laughs> and that's easy. You just whack out a foot and move everything forward and weld it up. And you can do it that way. But now, your trailing arms are too long. So you either need to cut those down, which is not good, or relocate the cross member forward, which is not good. And at the same time, do some sort of a strong structural weld. You're making a lot of work for yourself, especially when you notice if you come forward, you got this nice flat frame area that's perfect to make your cut and realign everything. That's why you want to cut underneath the cab. All right, the first thing we need to do is remove the rear cab mount and the front bed mount. And the best way to do this is to knock off the heads of the rivets and then punch them out with an air hammer. Tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Okay, let's talk about cutting a frame. When you go to cut or shorten or section a C-channel style frame, you never want to just make a vertical cut and weld it back together. Because first of all, it's very hard to realign it. Second of all, remember the frame is going to flex, but your weld is harder than the surrounding metal. So what happens when you line that weld all up, you make the perfect place for that frame to crack. 
Now it's not going to crack right on the weld, it's going to crack on the softer metal on either side. So the idea here is to spread the weld out so that's not a problem. Now one approach is to use what's called an angle cut. Check this out. An angle cut combines a vertical cut with a horizontal cut and as you can see it spreads the weld out across the frame giving you a very strong joint. The problem is, once you start to try to realign everything, well, that can be a little bit of a problem. So, we are going to move up to a step cut. Now, check this out. A step cut has a vertical cut here and here, horizontal cut there, and once again, it spreads a weld out across the frame, giving you an incredibly strong joint with no threat of cracking. Best part is, when you go to put it back together, a step cut literally just falls back into place. This is the best cut to use on this kind of a project. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. Hey, we're back, and it is a good thing that you got here because we are just about to cut this truck in half and convert it from a long bed to a short bed. Now, as you can see, we've got floor jacks under the front and rear sections to give us support when we cut this thing. And we've also spent a bunch of time getting measurements lengthwise, crosswise, distance from the floor that we can use as reference when we go to put this thing back together. Now, it's time to lay out our step cut. Check it out. To give us a good starting point, we measured four and a half inches from the rear cab mount hole and made a vertical line using a square. Then from there, we measured forward 12 inches and made another vertical line. From there, we went forward another 12 inches and made a final vertical line. Next, we'll mark the center line of the frame, in this case, three inches, and connect all the lines. Finally, we'll mark the radius in the corners of the cuts using a round object. Radiusing the corners not only makes realignment easier, it removes the sharp corners so a crack can start there. At this point, you're ready to make your cuts. You can use a sawzall, a plasma cutter, a torch, even a jigsaw here. Now you've done it. You have cut a perfectly good truck in half. You must be out of your mind. At least that's what people are going to tell you. But don't listen to them, man, because all you have to do now is dress the cuts with a grinder and pull this thing together. With the frame fit back together, you'll want to use clamps to hold the pieces in place. Now the floor jacks will give you plenty of adjustment to make sure everything is lining up properly. Make sure you spend some time here checking and double checking to make sure the frame is square and straight. Because if you weld this thing together crooked, you're going to have a big mess. Once it's right, weld it together. Now even though the frame is thicker metal, it's a good idea to keep your welds about three or four inches long and then move to another area so you don't cause warpage in the frame rails. Mm -hmm. 
With the welding done, now just take a grinder and dress the welds down until no one knows they were there. Now, for those of you that thought that this couldn't be done or that you couldn't do it, well, check it out. All welded back together, the seams are gone. You put a little paint over those, you'll never even know this surgery was done. Now, even though this is very strong, it's always a good idea to add some reinforcement around your cuts. There's a couple ways to do that. If you want to keep the look of a C-channel frame, you can cut what's called a fish plate out of steel, and it welds right on the inside and covers the weld. However, if you'd like to add a flat area where you can mount fuel pumps or exhaust hangers or compressors, well, you probably just want to make a boxing plate and box this section of the frame. That's what we're going to do. If you've got a classic long bed Chevy truck, but always wished it could be a short bed, well, that wish can happen but it requires cutting 12 inches out of the frame and welding it back together. Then building some boxing plates and welding those in place. And grinding it all smooth. Now at this point you may be wondering, so was that it? Do I have a short bed now? Well, not quite, but we're close. The next step is to relocate these cab mounts 12 inches back from their original location to make up for the chunk that we took out of the middle. And this is just a matter of drilling some holes and bolting them in place. Seven sixteenths holes will match the diameter of the old rivets perfectly. And grade five hardware will give you plenty of strength. The final step is to whack eight inches off the rear of the frame so a short bed will fit properly. And just like before, a sawzall will make quick work of this. And that is it. You are done. But what have you done? Well, basically, you have your original frame with all the serial numbers still intact. It's just a little shorter. But the big question is, is that cab now going to bolt down on that frame correctly? Well, there's only one way to find out. But before we do that, we need to talk cab mounts. Check it out. This is an original cab mount. These are brand new cab mounts from LMC Truck. Now, notice that the original is not only really rusty, but it's also compressed way down from decades of use. Something like that is gonna make it almost impossible to realign your cab, your bed, and your body parts. So putting on new cab mounts is mandatory for any kind of restoration work. If your measurements were correct, you'll find that as you lower the cab down, it'll line up perfectly with the relocated cab mounts. There you go, short and sweet, and something that you can do. Now obviously the front just bolts together using this pile of parts here, but what about that short bed? I mean, that's the reason we did this, right? Well, that just bolts together too using this pile of parts here. But you're gonna have to wait to see this because we are out of time today. What are you working on? Brought to you by Dake. If you have the dream, we have the tools. Today's What Are You Working On comes from a little kid by the name of Joel Cornett. Now check him out. In this picture, he's three years old. It was taken in 1988. And the truck that he's sitting on is a 1957 Chevy that his dad picked up to restore. 
Unfortunately, Joel's parents split up right after this picture was taken. So the truck sat torn apart for over 20 years. And one day, Joel's dad came in and said, we either need to build this thing or we need to sell it. Fortunately, they decided to build it. So the first thing they did was find a wrecked 2003 Duramax truck and start combining the two together. Now, not only did they stick in the Duramax diesel and the Allison transmission, they took the complete newer dash and the seats and stuffed them in the cab. The body was completely restored, and since they wanted to build a dually out of this thing, they took the original fenders and widened them out five inches so that they'd cover the two rear tires. Now, of course, the chassis was too long, so they chopped it down from a long bed into a short bed. And after two years and almost 3,500 hours of labor, this is what rolled out of the garage. One of the coolest early Chevys that we've seen in a long time. And Joel says it drives great, and his dad is blown away to have it back out on the road. I'm sure he is, but not more happy than this kid. So Joel, awesome job. And to recognize not only a great project, but a great history, we're gonna give you one of these Dake Arbor Presses to help you on your next project. We're also gonna give you a year supply of Hot Rod Magazine so you can get some ideas for that next project. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you wanna get involved in this, you gotta send your project into what are you working on and we'll do our best to get it on the air. But don't forget, we gotta have some good pictures of it and we need a good story telling us how you got into the project and what you're doing with it. Also, don't forget, we got a model building contest going on. So if you're not building the full size stuff, at least you can do some of the smaller things. All right, that does it for us today. We will see you next time.